to video number three. Here we go. Getting into some of the darker stuff. Yes, we're heading into that. Thank you, Stell, for doing this. You're welcome. I'm ready when you are. Okay. So June 2008, we load up the truck and the Jeep and all our stuff and head out on our epic trip. Uh, we left North Carolina and went to Georgia and down to Florida and across to Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, saw the Grand Canyon and up to see family up in Colorado and then across to Oregon and Washington and Montana, Minnesota, Ohio, and back to North Carolina. So that was our grand road trip. One of our first stops was in Georgia to spend a day or two with uh, the master sergeant that he was deployed with. And I was really hopeful in general for this trip that this might be the cure for whatever was causing the struggles. Um, and so this stop I thought was really important to be able to spend time with someone he was deployed with that, you know, they understood each other. They went through the same stuff, process things. Um, and they had some late nights or late night drinking and talking and, um, going through, you know, just outside of the, you know, being deployed, being able to just go through all of that. Um, and I think that was good. Um, and, you know, seeing family and another friend, uh, one of his ROTC trainers, uh, in Texas that he respected. And so we spent some time there. And again, I thought this was going to be really helpful, uh, people that might have a better understanding of what he went through as opposed to me, who's never gone through anything like a deployment, um, thought that would be healing and helpful. Um, and I think it was, I think it did do some good. Um, but you know, we kept trucking along. We're, um, visiting family, uh, and he got to share his story there. Um, but there was no part of this trip that I drove. And I don't know if it was because we were towing the Jeep. And so Brian didn't want to put that stress on me or, you know, he would say he liked to drive. Although in my head, I kind of wondered about that because it seemed like he liked to drive if there weren't other drivers around, which didn't happen that often. Um, and the stress of trying to entertain our daughter throughout this trip, I don't, I think he preferred the stress of driving over <laughs> trying to keep her from fussing. Um, the little stinker did figure out what blue signs were though. And uh, she would be whining, 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 and then they'd get less as we approached the rest stop signs. And we think, yeah, we can make it to the next rest stop and drive by the rest stop. And then the whining would ramp right back up and we'd go, oh, she knows she gets out of the car <laughs> there. So she learned a lot that trip too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yep. But there was, I remember one instance, we had our struggles on this trip. I, I have a terrible sense of direction. Um, I was the navigator though. And we were working off of an atlas and MapQuest directions. So if you went off the MapQuest directions, like if you didn't find what was on that sheet of paper, you were kind of stuck. You didn't have anything to go off of. And, um, you know, we got to the Texas ORV park trying to get there and things were not matching up with MapQuest. It was late. It was dark. That was a struggle. We ended up setting up camp in the dark with fire ants. It was, it was all the things, um, that, you know, causes general stress for anyone, but, um, Brian's reactions are always seem to be more, um, than I expected. Um, and when we were in Montana, there was a, you know, I ran an errand and that was, I took the truck somewhere and I adjusted the seats and mirrors because I'm shorter than Brian and, uh, he came back in the car and was just really upset. His response was more than I thought was necessary, you know, because I am short. Of course I moved the stuff and, you know, I had disrupted, you know, where everything was for him. 
he it was going to take him a while to get things readjusted and it just really messed things up for him and he was very angry about that um and so i'm sitting here going this is a trivial little thing you're overreacting logic like that though was not helpful and i that was that's a theme for me is i would throw logic in these situations well surely he will see logic and calm down but he was not in that place he couldn't see that um but I was not understanding that and it took me a long time to get beyond that uh, way of dealing with his uh, reactions. Let's just pause and respect how difficult this moment is right now. Because it's hard. It's hard for... It's obviously hard for you to recall it and try to say something intelligent about it and it's it's hard for me to hear it and know how bad i was whenever you're ready so mostly i would say it was a good trip i we have lots of memories wonderful pictures from all the places we went to um and there but I, I remember there were hard times there i i didn't log that i don't try to remember all those things i, I just do remember there were difficult times there um and you know driving with a kid that does not like being in the car for that long is just difficult <laughs> for sure um but what i came to is that the trip didn't heal him that was not the cure um he was still irritable he had anger there were rage reactions he had difficulty with noise um crowds or high sensory input places like i remember when he was with his family he has a lot of siblings and then there were all the nieces and nephews and everyone would be running around and talking and carrying on and he would find places where he could kind of escape the chaos um, and be in quieter less overwhelming places and to me it looked like he was freaking out over little things or he would be withdrawn and kind of unemotional and non-reactive um, it kind of went from those two extremes um, throughout the trip, which I have learned that that is pretty typical for PTSD, um, but I didn't know that then. Um, so the signs were there. I wasn't recognizing them. Um, Can I jump in here? Sure. I, I didn't recognize them either. I, uh, I used to enjoy big family gatherings and you know, kids running around. And I mean, being the oldest of 11, I had siblings that were in diapers when I'd left for college, you know, it, and I, I didn't know what was wrong with me at the time either. And I would get frustrated with how frustrated I was. And I would, you know, then I pull back and try to not be a bad person or a monster. I felt like sometimes, and I didn't recognize the signs either. No excuses here. I'm not, not excusing my behavior, but. What I, looking back, I, I wonder at myself as to why I didn't see it. I didn't know to look up what is PTSD or find out more information or why, why didn't I do any of that stuff? And I think what I've come to is that I honestly thought that in his separation process, I mean, they go through quite a bit of medical stuff and they have to go through all sorts of things before they separate. I thought, surely PTSD is a known thing for troops returning from um, deployments. Surely this would be something that they would identify in this process. They identified some other things for disability, but PTSD was not something that came up. So 
in my head, it's a known thing. The military should know about this. If he had it, they would have said something. Um, I know the military has its issues. Um, but I, I guess I just trusted that that was something that they would um, identify. And so I didn't, I kind of thought, well, then it must not be that. It must be something else. And come later down the road, I, I think I've learned that, you know, Air Force was not really dealing with PTSD the same as some of the other branches at that time just because they were maybe in denial of the number of troops that they had on the ground dealing with convoys and IEDs and everything else. And so they were kind of like, that's not, that's not an Air Force problem. So I, I think that that's what it was, but I kind of trusted that they would have identified it. And so I wrote it off as, we must be dealing with something else. So we get from this trip, he's not healed. I think I've gotten to the point where, you know, I had my impatient moment of, okay, when are we going to be over with this? Okay, well, maybe three months was too short. Maybe it's, you know, six months or a year. And I'm, I'm willing to be like, okay, it's just going to take more time. I've, I've kind of gotten over some of my impatience. Um, and we're trying to figure out next steps. Um, we actually... Returned from our trip, uh, the day we got back, we just sat in our driveway and ate ramen noodles because we didn't have any groceries. We didn't want to unload the truck. <laughs> so we just sat in the driveway and ate ramen and went to bed. <laughs> um, but we had another trip we were going to be heading out on across the country again because I was in a wedding in Colorado and Brian in a wedding in Oregon. So September, we took a more direct route across the country to go to these weddings Um and Brian had been applying to jobs. Brian was offered a job when we were in Oregon um, for a job in Kansas. We both looked at each other and said, Kansas? We hadn't considered Kansas, but we did want to get west. So we thought, well, it's more west than North Carolina. So we'll swing by the town on our way back to North Carolina and see what we think. And lo and behold, you get off of I-70 and Kansas is actually pretty nice. <laughs> Um, and so we, we liked the town and so Brian took the job. Uh, so we got home and he got packed up and ready to start his job in October of 08. And Meredith and I stayed behind so that we could coordinate the move and clean the house and take care of things um, and then catch up with him in uh, Kansas. And I, I think at this point I, I was optimistic that, okay, we're doing something different. We're out of the military and you've got the whole like new location, new job energy that you're just trying to figure it all out. So I thought, okay, we're going to, things are going to get better. Um, so yeah, he headed to Kansas. Uh, we did the, got the move all taken care of, um, joined him out here in Kansas in, uh, November and lived in an apartment briefly until we could get into our house that Brian found for us. And uh, I did a big cleaning here. And then uh, we moved in the week of Thanksgiving. Um, had a lot of work to do, though. The house had been empty for about nine months. And there had been an ice storm shortly after the previous owners had left. Um, and so there was, you know, tree damage. We have a lot of trees, so there was a ton of leaves on the ground, and we had a thriving population of mice in the house to contend with when we got in. <laughs> yeah. It was quite the mess. Yep. Lots of lots of projects to keep me busy. Yes. You should tell them about the washing machine. <laughs> uh, well, that was a sad story. Um, so the movers backed in their truck and we're unloading things and getting things in our house was a challenge. Um, just small doors and kind of weird places, but, um, they were unloading the washing machine and they dropped it off the back of the truck lands on the driveway. It's all like everything springs and goes different directions. They set it up right. And then they look at me and say, where do you want it inside? 
I said, I don't want that in the house. <laughs> they said, oh, it's fine. They're trying to shut the door and the door won't shut. And we had to get a new washer. It was, it was pretty sad. <laughs> so that was us starting a new chapter. I'm not ready. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready.